Why does this mammal eat its own brain and why is this important to us? The shrew runs along the sand, tilting its tiny, velvety body to the right and left. It takes just seconds to find the prize hidden in the sandbox, a delicious mix of worms, mealworms, and other meats. Finding out where the hidden food is isn't the only puzzle to be solved in Dina Detchman's lab something even more surprising is happening inside the shrew's head, it has to grow its shrunken brain again. It's a crazy animal, says Detchman, an ecologist at the Max Planck Institute for Animal Behavior in Germany. We can learn a lot from them. To prepare for the winter season when food is scarce, many animals slow their rhythm, sleep or migrate to warmer regions. But the shrew is not one of them. To survive the colder months, this curious member of the animal kingdom eats its own brain and shrinks it by a quarter to grow back in the spring. The ability to shrink in large organs with the seasons allows animals to reduce calorie-consuming tissue when the temperature drops, and it's called the dental phenomenon. The shrew's miraculously shrunken brain deserves more than just a biological curiosity. Because understanding how these animals restore their brains could help doctors treat neurodegenerative diseases. Neurodegenerative is an inclusive term for a range of diseases that affect neurons in the human brain. As examples of neurodegenerative diseases, we can give Parkinson, SMA, Huntington, and Alzheimer's. I didn't quite get it at first. The way they react is really incredible, says John Dirk Neeland, associate professor of health science and technology, who is now working on drugs designed to mimic the brain chemistry of shrews. Discovered by Polish zoologist Denel. Decades later, few scientists seem to have grasped the consequences of August Denel's 1949 discovery. Born in Warsaw, Denel spent the early years of his career working on bird eggs. Because of the Nazi occupation, his work on beavers and other mammals of Europe was interrupted. The young zoologist served in the Polish army during the war. He was then taken prisoner by the Germans and began teaching biology in a prison camp. When he returned to the laboratory after the war, he noticed an interesting phenomenon in the pointed-nosed mice collected from the Bieloiza forest on the border of Poland and Belarus, their skulls were getting smaller and larger with the seasons. Lives fast and dies young. This animal, which is among the high metabolic mammals, relentlessly hunts for insects, spiders and worms to survive. From the Scottish highlands to the Siberian tundra, it makes sounds and pitches inaudible to the human ear and uses sound vibrations to navigate underground. Unlike deer or bears, shrews are too small to migrate and too hyperactive to hibernate when the temperature drops. Their average lifespan is about two years, meaning they live fast and die young. Detchman reports that their metabolism is not suitable for slowing down for hibernation. This makes it extremely difficult to contain these already nervous creatures in the laboratory environment. The shrew is one of the few mammals with a venomous bite. It also emits a foul odor to repel cats and other predators. Researchers keep their cages outdoors to acclimate the shrews to the seasons. Their metabolisms are so fast that Detchman and his colleagues have a hard time calming them down to study. We can't put them to sleep, Detchman says, because their unconsciousness poses the risk of starving. Bigger is not always better. These animals' strategy of reducing their brain power helps them conserve energy during the winter months, but this comes at a price, of course. A series of experiments by Detchman and his team involving finding food in the sandbox reveals that large-brained shrews outperform their small-brained counterparts. They shrink their brains and conserve energy, but they're less good at solving some learning tasks, let's not say stupid, says Detchman. But the real highlight starts after that, in the spring, their brains grow again, and their ability to solve lab puzzles is back. He tests his ability to navigate a maze made of Lego bricks. Yes, the striking thing about shrews is that they shrink their brains, but we also see them starting to enlarge in the spring, says Neeland, co-founder of a biotech company called 2N Pharma. The idea that a smaller brain is more favorable for some animals is hard to accept for many people, Detchman says. He and his colleagues received hate letters after they published a study titled Bigger is Not Always Better showing that some bats have evolved smaller brains to fly faster. The next step is to understand exactly how they achieved this. According to the findings of the research so far, the brains of our pointed-nosed friends do not grow back in the same way. For example, 
the hippocampus returns to normal while the neocortex does not expand. Both of these parts of the brain help with memory. And the lipid-rich white matter in the brain seems to be disappearing. This suggests that the tiny mammal may be consuming parts of its own brain so its body can survive the winter. Disruption of the white matter, which helps transmit information in the brain, is a symptom of neurodegenerative diseases. Researchers are now looking for proteins or other triggers responsible for shrinkage and regrowth in the brains of shrews. How many centuries have people studied the fauna of Europe? Think of all the wonderful things that are hidden there because we've never looked before. Dechman and Neeland, along with evolutionary biologist Liliana M. Davalos at Stony Brook University in New York, are receiving a grant from the nonprofit Human Frontier Science Program to fund their research. Although Neeland's company is currently working on a drug, Dechman conveys the latest situation about the process, saying, We are far from viable results. For how many centuries have people studied the fauna of Europe? And how did thousands of scientists not see it? Think about all the wonderful things that are hidden there because we've never looked before, says Davalos. For Davalos, finding such incredible talent in an animal right under the noses of European gardeners is remarkable in itself. According to him, the discovery shows that there is more to be found in the rainforests of the Amazon, Congo and elsewhere.